Welcome back to Marine's World everyone. I have a real treat for you in this video because I'm completing the Blackbird Nest page and I could not be happier with it. I just think it's gorgeous and I'm so proud of myself for doing it. And before we get to the Blackbird page, which is the main event today, believe me, I'd just like to say Thank you for all your comments. You know I love reading them and I do my best to get back to everybody about them um, because I'm very grateful that you think to spend your time sending me a message and that you appreciate and you like this, the content that I'm filming for you. Um, and with that I'd like to say a really a special thank you to Chris who sent me a super thanks. Um, and I didn't actually know what that was properly until it popped up on my channel but uh, now I have realised so thank you very much Chris I really appreciate it it was very unexpected um, it's just lovely to feel that I know I'm filming things that you want to see and that you forgive my dodgy camera work sometimes and yeah anyway I just say thank you and now without further ado I'm going to cut you straight in to the blackbird's nest. I'm about to start finishing the nest on this page um, that's going to sit next to the blackbird. So I've got my things prepared. I've decided to make a base for the nest so that I'm going to uh, put everything around after the same off the same piece of ribbing that I used to make the tree trunks. So. I've just cut an oval. Uh, I'm busy tidying up my shelves and reorganising a bit and I actually found a different colour of raffia so it's the same thing it'll have been off a bunch of flowers but it was a better colour than the pink so I've actually taken a bit of that and just used my cheap craft acrylic and I've painted it up with a bit of watered down craft acrylic so I've got this sort of straw brown but still with pale bits in. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use my thread from the thread jar. Um, I, might, I might get some other little bits of dark wool from there as well. So that is what I'm going to be attempting to make the nest with. And although ne blackbirds nests don't traditionally line their nests with feathers, I do have these as well which I pick up if I see feathers anywhere. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to use some of the fluffy bits, some of the downy bits off here to line the nest a little bit with. Just, I'll call it a bit of poetic license um, because I've got them anyway. And I think it'll make it look pretty. If painted blue silk for the eggs, which I think now is maybe not quite the right color but I'm going to use it first and then if I think I need to alter it, I'll paint it afterwards with the ink tents. So definitely the first thing I'm going to do is just tack this oval down and I'm just using a bit of brown um, embroidery thread from my stash, from my, from my bundle I mean, from the big tangle. Anyway, I've got that tacked down. So now for the lovely creative bit. Okay, I keep checking my camera because I've, I've, I've tried to get the camera in a better position today. So I hope it's working. Leave me a comment if you think it's a better angle because um, I've struggled to sort of understand how I'm supposed to do things sometimes with the camera and but this time I've got a better position it seems to be a bit more awkward for me to sew but uh, the position seems better for the video itself anyway I'm looking and I can't find another brown one in my in my tangle so I'm going to go for my orderly ones and I'm gonna come up with this good dark brown. It's not a stranded so I'll use that, that'll be nice because it'll introduce a little bit of variation. I'm going to have a longish length because I don't really want to have to cut off in between 
once I get in the flow, I just want to carry on. So the first thing, I've got my needle threaded. I'm just going to hold this. There's no point trying to make it even. It's because I'm trying to get a nest. So I feel if it's a bit uneven, that's fair enough. And I've got some thick bits of threads. I've even got some threads in here that are not even the right colour. They're just bits of purple and what have you. But I feel as if that'll all add to the add to the prettiness of it. And I feel as if my little blackbird, if he saw some of my threads outside, he might use them. So that'll be all right. So I'm just going to hold them together. Take a bit more of this thread nest here. This came off the quilt when I was doing the binding. So I was just ripping them down and I took all the threads off. So I'm just going to hold the threads, the raffia, the bits of everything. And I'm just going to loosely sort of make a make a, a, a circle and just yeah I think that's sort of a thing quite nice so I'm not going to bother about all these long bits I'll either cut them off or weave them in and I do want to make it a decent size otherwise the little eggs are going to be too tiny I think if I lie it down on there I feel that's quite nice already. So I'm going to start with this lovely thread. I want to leave this middle bit here open because that's going to be covered up with the bits of feather and the eggs. So I don't want to totally cover the base. That's just down to give me an idea of the size. So I am just going to put my I'm going to start my thread off. I've got a knot in there, just doing it from the top. I put this little piece of stuff and I am really, I am just going to stab into it every so often until I can catch everything down. And I'll just try and make the stitches lie in the way of this circle. I don't want to go straight across, which will make them look obvious. I'll just try and lie them in. So I'm going to take that one. And I'm going to come this way with it. And I'm actually outside of that oval, which is okay. That's there, just there for me as a guide. And the more I stitch it down, the more I'll be able to see what I'm trying to achieve. So again, I'm going to come from there and I'm going to come right over to here with quite a big stitch. And we'll just pull those, pull those pieces of raffia in. And I'm going to go really quite loosely right around the outside. Because once it's tacked down, I can refine it as I like. And I sort of want a side-on view of the nest. I feel as if it's already getting a bit big for the page. But maybe not. So... The minute it's hard to see where I'm actually stitching, but... As, it, as, as everything comes together, it'll get easier to do. You just have to sort of have a vision in your head of what you're aiming for. So like, like when I was doing the bird, and I'll just keep thinking, I think, I think feathers, bird, I need, the, I need the stitching to go in the way of the feathers. Now I'm just, I just keep thinking, nest. I just, I just keep in my mind a nest. And then the stitches need to go in the way of how a nest will be. And somehow it ends up working out. So I feel I'm starting to get the shape. So I'm going to put that there. Okay. 
I feel as if it's gone a bit too big. I'm going to wait, see when I've got a bit more couch down whether I need to alter it at all. In fact, I think I am going to pull that bit in because it's gone really wide. Maybe I want it wide. Maybe I do want it wide. It's covering up some of my bonny leaves under there, but that's okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave it a bit wider. Otherwise, then the eggs are going to be tiddly. So let's just do that. I'll just sort of get this bit arranged a bit more. Oh, I could use my nettle thread. Maybe I'll use my nettle thread in it. That would be actually, I think I'll quite like that. Now I've thought of it. I'm just going to hold that there because I quite like the way that's arranged. Pick my needle up. And let's just get some stitches in. And I don't necessarily want to pull them too tight. I know it's a book, but I do want the 3D element of it. I want it to be relief. I don't want it to be super flat. So I end up end up I end up with thick books because I maybe maybe I should have little separate things instead of a book but I, I really love the books. That bit of pink is going to be really obvious but let's just see how it looks when I've finished. It's all of a sudden just starting, I can see it. I can see where it's going. Some of these that are just sticking out, I feel like I'll just leave them because it'll just help with the, the sort of the natural look. I'm going to get some of these bigger pieces in. Just like that. And just keep stitching. I'll just keep pulling the stragglers in where I feel they need to be. And if they're not if they if they look nice where they are, I'll leave them be. So this piece here, that needs to come in a bit. So I shall just I'll come back down this way. There we go. That bit needs to come in. I'm just going to carry on a bit. So I can see that I've got the nest on the way. I'm going to do a little bit more stitching with that, with my brown thread. It's just a thread knot that can go in. Um, I'll stitch with my brown thread a bit and then I'm going to stitch with my nettle thread that I made the other day. So. That might look like moss and bits of grass coming through. I think now that I've thought of it, I just have to do it. So it'll be the first time ever that I'll have attempted to even make this finer thread with my nettles. But now that I've thought of putting it in here, somehow I have to get, get it done. I hope that it will stitch. If it won't stitch, then I will couch it down. But I'm going to put it through a needle and hope it stitches. I've, I've got a really big needle and I've threaded my nettle through it, my nettle string. So I am going to really try. So I'm hoping, I'm not even going to put a knot on it. In fact, I don't think I'll come through from the back. I'm going to try and not go through the fabric. So that I feel as if, it, if I pull it just through the nesty bits, 
it'll be fine. So I'm just going to see what I can do. I think it'll look quite nice. If I can just, I'll have to turn it around, I think. Oh, oh it is pulling through. Well, I'm over the moon. I just think this is quite cool. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to go around. I'm going to be the nest again. And just keep thinking nest as I take this round and think if I was the blackbird, where would I be putting these little bits of nettle and dried plant? Just going to take a few long straight stitches because I don't want the nettle to disappear. I do want it to be, I do want to be able to see it. I think it's got caught on some of the threads there. Wow, this is the coolest thing. I feel as if I might want to make more nettle thread now. Maybe I'll have to, maybe I'll have to find somebody who can show me how to do really good, good fine thread. It is only just visible, but it doesn't matter. I know it's there. It doesn't matter if nobody else does. Oh wow. Well, well, this was the best place to use it. Making a nest for some blackbird eggs. And I do, I can just see the little bits of green poking through all the brown. Put it up there. I don't really think it would go through the fabric very well, but it doesn't have to. I can just surface surface stitch it in. I'm gonna bring it up so you can see it going in. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> I love it. It's looking a bit too designed now though. I'll have to just make it a bit more raggy. There we go. I might as well use this bit up now. There's no point in it uh, not getting used. So I'm just going to I'm just going to stitch away until I've got none left. Hide it and let it peep through. There, my needles come off now. Um, let's put that one in there. Well, how amazing was that? I'm just going to curl that bit in. I don't even want to cut it off. So the next thing, feathers. So I do have, I can't, obviously can't use these great big ones, but I think if I cut the stalks off and just use the little feathery bits and couch it in, in fact I might only need one, it'll just maybe two, okay. Two feathery bits. There's a good feathery bit on that one. I'll cut the stalk. Cut the end of the stalk and I'll cut another feather. That'll do. I think I've had those in there for quite a long time. I'm using the same brown thread. I'm just going to couch down over the over the rib of the feather. I really just need a couple of stitches. I don't really in fact I don't actually I think I'm just going to give them one stitch each. They're going to get um, eggs on top of them. I'm going to poke it under there. That's better. As I say, I know it's not exactly what a blackbird would do, but it suits me to do it. Right, I think 
I think that's sufficed to make a feathery bottom. Next are the eggs. It's looking nice though. I like it. It's actually taken me four attempts to get a blackbird's egg that I'm actually happy with, which is this one here. Put it on my hand so you can see it. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with that one. Um, the problem was that I originally was just gathering up a piece of this painted in polyester silk. So my very first one ended up like that, which is a load of rubbish. You can see whether I've gathered it in on the back. So I just actually cut up a, an oblong of silk like that and just started to try and sculpt it. And I was adding a little bit of this wool, which is off a, an old pillow. And I was stuffing a little scrap of the wool in and trying to sculpt it. But what I couldn't do is get rid of the gathering, sort of the, the areas where it's gathered. I couldn't get it smooth enough and get it pointy enough. So I tried again with that bit. Oh no, that bit, that bit. And I, this time I cut an oval instead of a square. So I've got a better shape. So I wasn't happy with that one either. So then I came up with cutting an oval shape out of a bit of cardboard. And this is just off a bit of manila folder, but it could just as easily be a cereal box cardboard. So I cut um, ovals of the shape I wanted and which one did I do next that one and so that has definitely worked better because I've laced the back and put a piece of um, a bit of the wool stuffing in as I went I sort of came out a lot better I've got less wrinkles but in the end this one which I'm really, I'm as happy as I can be. Um, I'd quite like it to be better, but it's okay, and I'm going with this. I've cut the the oval larger, and instead of the wool stuffing, I'm using flannel, because the wool stuffing was hard to keep in and hard to mould, so when I was pulling the silk tight, it was making creases where I didn't need them. So I'm going to show you the method that I've come up with. I originally was going to do five eggs, so I think I only need three. So what I'm actually doing is I am just folding this bit of flannel up. Maybe need a bit more than that little bit. Let's cut another, I cut another little strip off. So I'm just folding this bit of flannel till I get the thickness I think I want. I'm holding on the bit of cardboard and just cutting around it to make the shape. So that none of what was happening with the wall is that it was migrating over the edge of the cardboard and still not really allowing me to have the smoothness. And really you want a smoothness for a bird's egg. It's no good if it looks bumpy. So once I've got that, like that, I was actually just shaping it in a bit because I wanted high in the middle. So I can just carve it out with the scissors a bit. Like that. Leaving it high where I want. And then holding my bit of silk over the top and then when I turn it over the other thing I did wrong was cut it too near because this is quite frayish so if I cut it too close to the cardboard when the needle goes in it just pulls straight through so I need a decent amount to lace on the back I thought about doing glue but I'd rather just lace it by hand. So now 
I dare not let go of it because it's not sort of now this is this is when I can sculpt it so I'm just going to go in with my needle and thread and I'm just going to start and try and sculpt it and I'm just lacing the back just like you'd lace an embroidery onto its backing but I'm lacing the bird's egg instead so it doesn't matter how I don't pull it too tight at first it's more important to just get the get the actual fabric on so you, so I can let go so once once it starts to just keep going I'm just going to lace from one side to the other all the time not pulling overly tight at the beginning the the final shaping can be done once I can turn it round and have a look but at the minute I don't even want to turn it round I just want I just want that fabric to be as smooth as possible on the front side because that's where it's going to be seen I feel as if I'm almost at the stage where I can have a look at the front one more piece there okay so you can see when I turn it round that I've actually got quite a nice rounded shape going there you can see where I've carved it out with the scissors it's staying nice and smooth so all I need to do is keep smoothing that smoothing that down and lacing it with the with the thread at the back I'm not concerned that the back's a mess because it's going to be on the blackbird's nest so it really doesn't matter to me I'm more concerned that it looks as nice as possible from the front and however I get it there is fine by me there's a bit there look there's not really very much for me to put my needle in because it, it will fray so I'm going to go right to the edge and hope for the best yep and I'll just help it round with it stretch it in with my fingers and just keep lacing the back round and round lacing it one side to the other and I can start and pull it tight now which will all help the front to be nice and actually as I pull it tight it's curving it a little bit which is helping to give it that rounded shape that I would like for an egg and I think I think that's, that's pretty okay that's pretty okay to me a few stray threads that I can cut off and I'm going to finish that off and I'm going to do one more because I would like three eggs in the end eventually I can cut that off And I've got a good shape so I'm going to I'm going to do one more oh dropped it I'm going to do one more and then get them all painted up to look like that I've made my other one now and definitely the adage of practice makes perfect definitely applies because I feel that's the best one ever and the differences I made on that were one extra layer of the flannel so it made it a little bit more thick I started lacing it side to side instead of top to bottom and the side to side lacing definitely made a difference so that fit, I feel as if that's the best one but it doesn't matter they they will all be fine um, so I'm just going to touch them with a bit of colour because they're not quite blackbird egg colour they need to be more of a bluey green so I am just going to get a little bit of this 
blue of the ink tents on my brush. Just a little bit of uh, blue. Like that. And a little bit of green. Now I just need the little speckles. So I'm going to use my fine brush, not too much water. I did actually think about embroidering these on, but in the end, I just thought it would be nice for them to be painted. I'll just make some speckles. I just don't want very many down the bottom. And the little speckled egg and this one too. That looks decent to me. Getting ready to put them in the nest which is very exciting because that means this page will be finished. Okay I've got my nest, I've got my three eggs, I've got a single strand and here we go. I'll come up from the base and let's see just go through the back of a through the back, I suppose. Oh, oh, I'm so excited just to put them on. Just when it all comes together, just it gives me a total thrill. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Blackbirds should line their nests with feathers, I've decided, because it just looks so lovely. I'll come up again. I've got my, look, look, there's my um, nettle string, nettle thread, next, next one, just making one stitch through the back, that's really all it needs. Lie that one in there. It's not like it's, you know, something that's going to get lots of wear, it's a page in a book, so... It doesn't have to be, you know, sewn on for its dear life. Last one. Oh my goodness. How exciting is this? I'll get him in. I think I need all the points together, actually. Maybe I've done the wrong way around there. Yeah, I think I need all the little points going together so I'm just going to go down and I'm going to come back up and tack that one again through the back just go through the back of it that way round and then pull it down into the nest Well, I couldn't be more pleased if, well, I don't know, it's just, I love it. I just got one or two tiny little bits of more to do. I'm going to, I'm going to fasten that off. I don't think I need to do anything more with those little eggs. I'll just do a bit of overstitching to finish. Maybe, let me see, I've got. Let me see, I'll cut a leaf out and see, whoops, I'll cut a leaf out and see if I think it needs extra leaves. See if I'm just overthinking things. I'm quite sure now. Off. Oh. On. I have hidden some under the nest now. I think I'm going to add those two on there. I don't think I want anything over the top. I think maybe it'll balance balance the design up. If I just... Yeah, one's going there and one's going there. And that'll be me done. 
Well, here it is finished. I've added those two leaves. I'm really pleased about that. And all I've done is I've folded the seam allowance back on both of these pages. So you can see how it'll look when it's in the book and when it's sewn together properly. So obviously I haven't pressed them or anything and they're just the first two pages. So I might have to amend how many pages I do because actually it'll just be super thick unless I do something else, which I'm not sure about at the moment, but really do want to do a book. Um, and I just, I'm just over the moon. I'm really, really pleased with the blackbird and how he looks, but I'm absolutely just can't tell you how lovely it is to see that nest there. I absolutely love it. Sometimes I just think, I can't believe I did that, but I did, and it looks lovely, and, oh my goodness, even the little bits of pink coming out here is lovely, and my nettle thread is there, and I can see it, it's just, that's wonderful, so I hope you love it as much as I do, and I'm not sure which bird I'll be doing next, but... I don't, at the minute, I don't think anything can be better than that little nest of eggs. It's just super. I'm certain sure that you have loved seeing that blackbird's nest come together. It's so lovely. I just almost feel like I can't go on with another bird because I don't think I can do anything as lovely as that. Um, in the end though, I am going to do another one, so that's what's happening. Anyway, in the meantime, um, just to say what else I've been up to, I'm in the midst of redoing my cupboards because I felt as if I was in a bit of a mess and I really do like being quite sorted out. So I'm doing my craft cupboard here, which has um, really got all my paints and things in and some crafting stuff but it's more art stuff in there so I'm tidying that out I've been tidying these drawers out these drawers were full of um, vintage lace and ribbons but then also curtain tape and bias bindings so they are now going to be up behind me whereas I'm more accessible but that means that all my uh, bunny bits of quilting patches are now going to go in the drawer because they weren't as accessible um, now I've changed my sewing table to the old dining table which is bigger I, I struggle to reach the shelves because I'm not very tall so I'm just sort of jiggling things around um, the other thing is I'm almost finished my hexi table runner the quilt as you go runner so as I come to the last few of those I'll probably film that as a little tutorial because I've had one or two questions about it uh, so I'll do that as a little a little video um, which also made me think that it might be nice to do a video of some sort of a question and answer thing because I do get questions about all different sorts of things so I think maybe within the next couple of weeks or so maybe I could do a Q&A thing uh, so if there's anything you're wanting to find out um, I can't promise I'll answer everything, it depends, it depends what it's about, but I'll do my best to, um, I'll write them down and, and try and answer questions if it's about equipment or the way I work or, or whatever, whatever you want to ask me by all means and I'll, and I'll do a special video just on something like that, whether it's, well I don't know, whatever, whatever, whatever you want to find out maybe. But I'm going to leave it there and just say um, press the like button uh, please and subscribe if you would like to carry on seeing more lovely sewing um, and yeah like, thank you thank you very much everyone um, for cheering me onwards all the time and I'm just going to say bye for now from Marion's World and I'll see you next week with another video of Oh, it'll be the violets coming together with their leaves. That'll be next week. Um, see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.